Good morning. We're continuing our New Testament Bible reading series. If you've just joined us in this, uh, we're reading through the New Testament between now, well, a few weeks ago, and December. And today we're up to Matthew chapter 23, verse 37, reading through to Matthew 24, verse 35. Uh, pause now to read it if you haven't yet. Um, but also there's a link below for the Bible reading on Bible Gateway, but also a link uh, to the reading plan as well that you can download. All right. So as we look at this passage, Jesus has just spoken about the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, and his disciples ask him about the future. Chapter 24, verse 3, tell, uh, they say, Jesus, tell us, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of the coming, of your coming and of the end of the age? Notice they're asking two questions. When will the destruction of the Jerusalem temple happen? And what will be the signs of the end of the age, Jesus' second coming? Uh, Jesus' answer is a little complex, right? Uh, and it interweaves both the destruction of Jerusalem and his second coming as two separate but intertwined events. Now, uh, in my several minutes this morning, I won't have time to unpack all of this, nor to predict how it will all take place. Uh, but what I want to do is bring out from this text uh, a few things. A few clear teachings about three things. What we are to expect as Christians in this in-between time. What we should do as we await his coming and the hope that we have. Firstly, what are we to expect? Look at chapter 24, verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. This was true for both the disciples and for us, uh, we are to expect persecution. For many of us in the West, this idea of being out of favour or being persecuted, if we want to call it that, uh, is new, isn't it? Uh, because we've enjoyed so much favour over the last several centuries. Uh, this idea of being out of favour is unusual for us and it may lead us to think that Jesus' coming is just around the corner because we're starting to experience persecution. But we must remember that the norm to be expected by all Christians over all times is that we will be out of favour and persecuted. So we are to expect it. Secondly, Jesus gives us two commands as we await his coming. Have a look at verse 12. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And then verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. We are to stand firm, verse 12 says. When we see others turning away and we see their hearts turning cold, we are to stand firm, hold on to Jesus. And then verse 14 tells us that we are to preach the gospel to the end of the earth. We are to use this in-between time while we wait for Jesus' second coming to share the truth of Jesus with people. And then finally, we're reminded of the great hope that we have in Jesus' return. And this is hidden in the short statement in verse 8. Verse 8, all these things are the beginning of birth pains, Jesus says. What comes at the end of birth pains? Birth, new life. Hope, joy, the persecution, the pain, the difficulties in life are only birth pains. The process of delivering forth new life. We, the church, are giving birth to something new and beautiful, the kingdom of God. And it is painful as we uh, await Jesus to bring it all to fulfillment. But he is the midwife guiding us through to a safe and complete birth of the kingdom of God. These are just birth pains. Something beautiful is coming. So to recap, this passage tells us that as we await Jesus coming to bring his kingdom in its fullness, we are to expect suffering and persecution. We're to stand firm in our faith and spread the good news of Jesus in word and deed. And we are to live in hope, knowing that we are giving birth to the kingdom and that these are just temporary birth pains. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you for the hope we have in you, that the pain and the persecution and the heartache that we experience right now are only birth pains and that the life of the kingdom, the new life, the beauty is being brought about 
through us by your power and by your will. Help us in the meantime to stand firm and to share the beautiful truth of the gospel with others. Uh, and may we remember that n the persecution to come is only temporary. It's all part of the plan and that you hold us firmly. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.